Doctor Who has been on our screens for almost 60 years. It's obvious that I'm a fan of the show. You can tell because I have the DVDs, books, comics, toys, and so much more. It's popular in the UK and has been watched in more than 60 countries. For example, there's the US, New Zealand, Canada, and Singapore. But the one country that has a massive following is Australia, and the show has a lot of connections to the land down under. To start off, let's take a look at some history. Doctor Who began on the 23rd of November 1963 with the first episode, An Unearthly Child, written by Anthony Coburn, who was an Australian. He also wrote another episode called Masters of Luxor, but was scrapped by the head of BBC drama at the time, Sidney Newman, who created the show wanting no bug-eye monsters. Years later, it was adapted as an audio drama by Big Finish. After the release of An Unearthly Child, the writing crew was struggling what to write next. So, Verity Lambert, who was the producer, found Welsh writer Terry Nation to write a story. It was called The Dead Planet, better known as The Daleks. And thanks to that story, the show skyrocketed to an all-time high. So the BBC were planning to send the show to other countries, and New Zealand came first. Then it was sold to Australia, and aired on the 16th of January 1965 on Channel 9, but was later moved to the ABC, where it is showing now. That same year, the ABC was showing another sci-fi show that was made in Australia, called The Stranger. The show aired on April 26th, 1964, five months after Doctor Who made its airing on November 1963. The show was very similar to Doctor Who, but had a very different concept. There were a number of episodes that had to be censored due to some of the content being too scary for children. These clips, for example, were The Smugglers, The Macra Terror, Fury from the Deep, and Terror of the Autons. The good thing was that they would be put back in their normal release for any Australian home video releases. I also forgot to mention that some of the episodes from the 60s, like The Smugglers, Macro Terror and Fury from the Deep, are now missing from the BBC archives and can't be shown in their full entirety. But the censor clips are the closest thing that we'll get. After the classic series of Doctor Who ended on December 6th, 1994 due to low ratings, it was unsure if Doctor Who would continue, and the ABC's rights to Doctor Who was expired on June of 1994. But that would not be the end for Doctor Who in Australia. On May 27th, 1996, the Doctor Who TV movie with Paul McGann was released on BBC One and made its way to Australia and aired on the 3rd of July that same year. In 2003, in celebration for the 40th anniversary, the show returned to ABC on the 15th of September for a three-year run of repeats. And in 2005, Doctor Who returned with Christopher Eccleston and the show returned to popularity and gaining new fans like myself. 2013 was certainly a big year for the show because it was celebrating its 50th anniversary. I got to celebrate it in true Whovian fashion by dressing up as the 11th Doctor and visiting the good old ABC shop once in a while. A year later, Doctor Who The World Tour was released and it made its way to Sydney. I got to go to this and it was one of the greatest things ever and cosplaying as the 12th Doctor was truly amazing. And in 2015, the Doctor Who Festival came to Sydney and yes, you guessed it, I went there. And it was so amazing seeing so many people and so many Whovians. And the best thing about it, I got to meet Sylvester McCoy. And two years later, I got to meet him again, and he even signed my copy of Remembrance of the Daleks. During that year, Whovians was released on ABC Comedy, hosted by the legendary Rove McManus. It's a show made for Whovians by Whovians. In the show, Rove and his other Whovians, including Tegan Higginbotham and Barjo, talk about the recent Doctor Who episodes. But what about the other Australians who worked on Doctor Who? These include Ron Garner, who did the theme tune, and Dudley Simpson, who wrote incidental music for the show. Actors including Janet Fielding, who played Tegan Jovanka from 1982 to 1984, Kevin Lindsay, who played two Sontaran generals in the 70s, and how can I forget Kylie Minogue, who played Astrid Peff in the 2007 Christmas special Voyage of the Damned. And last but not least, Australian writer Sarah Dolliard, who wrote two Doctor Who episodes, which were Face the Raven and Thin Ice. There are episodes that were set in Australia, but weren't filmed there. 
For example, there's The Enemy of the World, my favourite Doctor Who story ever, and the pilot from 2017 where the 12th Doctor took Bill on a little visit to Sydney. Most recently, Spyfall was set in the Australian outback and was used as a hiding place for the Master, played by Chateau Dewan, though it was filmed in South Africa and not the actual Australian outback. So, where do we think Doctor Who is at the moment? What do we think might happen in the future? Well, why don't we ask a few of my Whovian friends? And I mean, the first question is, um, do you like Doctor Who? The answer is yes. Yes, to a certain extent, yeah. I certainly do. I've been a big fan of it for many years, um, and I'm a, a classic Whovian. I love um, the classic series, especially from about 1963 to about 1979 is my favourite period. Second question is, um, how much did do you know? Did, did do you know about Doctor Who? Uh, a lot of things. Um, I used to know a lot. I haven't watched the series regularly in quite a number of years, but uh, I've watched a lot of the classic series, pretty much all of Hartnell and Trout and Zira, and a lot of Tom Baker's as well. So they're probably my special views. That's great. So, um, how popular is Doctor Who in Australia? I don't know. Um, I haven't seen any statistics about it. I know that it has been broadcast on the ABC though recently and it is on iView. I have been watching uh, the 13th Doctor. I think it's probably taken a dip since uh, Jodie Whittaker took over, but mm. I personally actually really like her Doctor. That's good. Um, how popular do I think it's in Australia? Um, I definitely don't think the following's as big as in a country, say, like America or Britain, because popularity. Um, and I do think the fame has sort of fallen off a bit in recent times, so I'm not sure how popular it is. I haven't really heard much about it, mm. so but I don't have any discernible answer for that one. No. Yeah. And um, how long do you think Doctor Who will go on for? I think it's entering a McCoy era right now, um, sort of where the general um, audience doesn't like what it's doing. And I think it needs to be alerted to that, alerted to that, because it will eventually decline and become a uh, just. It might just die out again. It's a great question. Um, if you're asking my opinion, I would love it to go for another fifty years. Let's celebrate hundred years of Doctor Who. In conclusion, Doctor Who has maintained a following here in Australia for quite some time now. So, what will the show look like in the future? Well. Who knows? The show has taken many different forms, from the many spin-offs, books, audios, online fan films, and so much more. And in whatever state the show will be in, Doctor Who will certainly be around for many years to come.